transitioning off of sugar, or transitioning off of carbohydrates can be one of the most difficult things when it comes down to starting a low carb lifestyle or going on a keto diet. The fact is we don't give enough credit to those that actually kick the sugar addiction. It's very easy to get addicted to carbs. It's even easier to get addicted to sugar. And of course, it all has to do with its effect on the brain. But what I wanna do in this video is I wanna help you understand exactly what you can start eating and what you can start implementing into your life to get over the hump and to kick the sugar withdrawals and to kick the sugar addiction once and for all. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. We've got new videos coming out on this channel every single Tuesday, every single Friday, and every single Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. But additionally, we throw out bonus videos all the time as well. And you can hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you know whenever I'm doing live coaching broadcasts as well. All right, so let's cut right to the chase. Let's get to the good stuff. What's the first thing that you can start consuming when you're going through this transition phase? What's the first thing that you can consume when you're starting to feel those sugar withdrawals coming on? Okay, you're starting to get the headache, you're starting to get kind of antsy, you're getting nervous, you're getting the anxiety, you feel like you just subconsciously want to reach for that sugar. What can you do? One of the things that you can start implementing immediately is drinking some more matcha green tea. Here's the thing. Matcha is different from regular green tea. The concentration of what are called catechins is significantly more. You see, catechins are different pathways in which green tea activates different enzymes and different receptors within the body. But when we're talking about matcha, there's one particular catechin that stands out. And it's one that you've probably heard of before. It's called EGCG, also known as epigallocatechin 3 gallate Okay, EGCG has some pretty profound effects on the body through multiple different pathways. But the one I wanna reference here is its effect on what is called CCK. Okay, also known as cholecystokinin. CCK is a hormone that is triggered in response to food hitting the upper part of your small intestine. So as soon as you eat and you start digesting and that food hits your small intestine, this CCK is released. And it's the job of this CCK to communicate with the brain and tell your brain that you shouldn't have a desire to eat anymore. Okay, you, maybe you've heard of ghrelin before. Ghrelin is another hunger hormone, but that's a little bit of a different ballgame. Honestly, CCK completely blows ghrelin out of the water when it comes down to its effect on the brain. So matcha green tea has been shown to increase levels of CCK quite significantly, making it so that even without consuming food, you get that same satiation response. What's really intriguing is that there are studies that show that subjects that are literally injected with CCK halt their eating at that very moment. So a subject could literally be eating a meal and then is injected with CCK and will just stop eating. It's like the desire to eat is just completely gone. It's not a feeling of fullness. It's not really a feeling of like bloated, like I'm full, I don't wanna eat anymore, like Graylin. It's more of just a psychological thing, like I have zero desire to eat anymore. So since matcha can improve CCK levels, it's honestly a no-brainer. Now additionally, the epigallocatechin 3 gallate has a profound effect on norepinephrine levels. Norepinephrine levels are gonna make it so that you really just don't have a desire to eat. Okay, you think about the fight or flight response. If you're nervous or if you're running or if you're scared, you're not gonna to wanna to eat, right? It's because your epinephrine and norepinephrine levels are elevated. So if matcha can do that just through simple consumption, heck, that's the way to go. Okay, the next thing that I wanna talk about is a really interesting thing, and there's some new science that's starting to support this, and that's utilizing the right combination of fats and the right combination of fiber, okay? Now normally people talk about fats and protein as a way to satiate you, but I'm talking about something different. I'm talking about the right allocation of fats and specific soluble fibers. You see, when we look at how fats are digested, sure, they cause you to digest food a little bit slower, making it so you're satiated. That's kind of kindergarten stuff, okay? You wouldn't be watching this video, you wouldn't be tuned in if I was just telling you that fats slow down digestion and that's why you should eat them. You're looking for some interesting stuff. Okay, so there are some studies that took a look at this in a different way. There's a study that was published in the Journal of Cell Metabolism that took a look at oleic acid, also known as omega-9. So it's fine that these specific omega-9s convert into oleoethylanamide, also known as OEA. Okay, this OEA is a very interesting substance in that it acts upon nerve endings. So what happens is omega-9s are consumed and then they are transitioned through specific cells in the upper intestine and they get converted into this OEA. Okay, then this OEA acts upon the nerve endings to trigger sort of a peripheral feeling of satisfaction. Now what I mean by that is we're not having a feeling of satisfaction that's triggered back to the brain. We're literally having like this ancillary response that's making it so we don't really wanna eat anymore and it's occurring at the small intestine level. This is pretty darn intriguing. Now it does so by engaging what are called peroxisome proliferator activating receptors. Okay, these receptors are ancillary again. Okay, they're auxiliary. They sit outside of the brain 
and they trigger their own response that tells basically the stomach and the small intestine to not want food anymore. So you combine that with actually being satiated because the higher fat content triggering also the cholecystokinin, you have a double whammy effect on the brain, therefore making it so the brain doesn't want to eat, nor does the small intestine slash stomach. That's pretty powerful stuff, and that's new science coming out right now. Now, that's exactly where Susie's Good Fats comes in, okay? So I actually met these guys when I was up in Canada, okay? I met Susie, and I met her team when I was up in Canada speaking at the CanFit Pro in Toronto. The interesting thing is, I ate one of these bars when I was there, and I'm like, okay, that was insanely good. And I also found that I was like ridiculously satiated for like three hours after the fact. So I went back the next day and I asked them what was up. I asked them what was going on, what their mission was, and why I was so satiated, why I felt so full. And they explained to me that they're utilizing the right combination of fats, the right combination of soluble fibers, and they're putting it in an actual keto bar, literally the first ever ketogenic fat bar. Not a protein bar, but actually a fat bar. So I was super intrigued. So I told them right then and there that I wanted to feature them in a video somehow and wanted to explain the science of sugar withdrawals because their mission and Susie's mission is to truly fight sugar addiction and to get everybody off of the sugar and start looking at fats differently. And what I appreciated was that it wasn't all about just pushing the ketogenic lifestyle. I'm getting a little tired of that. Everyone's talking about keto, but they were talking about just really pushing good fats in the first place understanding that fats are not the culprit. Anyhow, I digress. So you can find them down in the description, literally the world's first ketogenic fat bar that you can get. So you're definitely gonna make sure you try them out. But what makes them interesting isn't just that they're utilizing the right fats. It's when they're combined with the right kind of fibers. So here's what's cool. You have this process called passive diffusion. Passive diffusion is where water is drawn into the small intestine or the colon. Now, if it happens too much, it can cause discomfort. Now, if you combine the right amount of passive diffusion from the right amount of soluble fiber in conjunction with the fats that are triggering that OEA response, you can have a pretty powerful thing. That passive diffusion is gonna slow down gut motility. So it's gonna make it so you're not as hungry. Therefore, allowing the oleic acid and allowing those fats to convert to OEA faster and easier because they're not digesting as quick. In essence, all that I'm saying is by adding the right combination of fats and fiber, you can truly kick the sugar addiction a lot easier, but also do it in a tasty way. So check them out in the description. The next thing I wanna talk about is foods that are gonna boost your dopamine levels, okay? Dopamine is the epicenter for everything when it comes down to food addiction, when it comes down to sugar addiction, and even the withdrawal symptoms that we get. So if we eat the right kind of foods, we can make a big impact on this. Now there was actually a study that was done at the University of Milan in Italy, and it took a look at utilizing magnetic stimulation through some kind of transient cranial therapy. So what they would do is they would zap the brain with some kind of magnetic stimulation to trigger specific neurotransmitter responses, in this case, dopamine. And what was found was that whenever the brain was triggered to produce dopamine, feelings of hunger completely went away. So it's like you're so satisfied, you don't have the desire to eat. It's pretty amazing stuff. When we start taking it a step further, we can understand that foods have an effect on this too, particularly high quality omega-3s. So that ends up looking at foods like sardines and salmon. Now, in particular, I'm a fan of sardines just because they're such a nice fat to protein ratio. Now, studies have shown that when you introduce omega-3s at a high amount into the diet, you have an increase of dopamine of 40%, meaning that you're not gonna have those cravings. You're not gonna have that subconscious desire to run right into the pantry and grab something sweet because you've already satisfied that dopamine itch. It's basically like trying to prevent yourself from ever needing to do something just impulsively. So it's pretty darn powerful. Now the other foods that you can consume are things like fava beans. Okay, fava beans bypass something altogether. Fava beans actually contain L-DOPA, literally. Now L-DOPA is the precursor to the neurotransmitter dopamine. If we don't have L-DOPA, we don't produce dopamine. So if we don't have L-DOPA, we never get that sensation or that reward that we're actually looking for. So fava beans, although you have to consume them in small amounts because they still have carbohydrates, can elicit a very profound effect. So when you combine these three by consuming some matcha, consuming some fava beans, a little bit of sardines, and then topping it off with a Susie's Good Fats bar when you're on the road, you're gonna have no problem combating that sugar addiction and getting into that low carb lifestyle that you're trying to get into. So make sure you check them out down in the description. Make sure you do this channel a service by supporting the companies that support this channel so I can create good content and continue to do this so that you can live the best possible life. I'll see you in the next video.